Thank you for watching or listening. I am Jason, the Bearded EV Guy. I'm hoping to cover EV news on about a weekly basis. If you have any interesting EV news stories, feel free to email the Bearded EV Guy at gmail.com. To start us off, some exciting news for Ford F-150 Lightning fans. You may be able to order your Ford F-150 Lightning by the end of this month. The Ford F-150 Lightning already has about 150,000 reservation holders. More than 75% of those are new customers to Ford. Soon you all can convert their reservation into an order, meaning this will be hot off the presses soon enough. The rumor comes from internal reports from a dealership that says orders are set to open on October 26th, so an official announcement from Ford should be soon. I'm personally holding out for the Cybertruck but I can't wait to play with the online configurator. Next, the Audi e-tron may be getting a refreshed battery and design soon. Audi's first electric vehicle launched in 2018. The e-tron was Audi's response to Tesla and other all-electric competitors who are making waves on our roads today. The carmaker has steadily expanded its EV lineup since then. Some photos have surfaced of a slightly new style. As always, these prototype cars are covered in a camouflage wrap. The grille seems smaller, Still don't know why legacy automakers insist on having a grill on their electric cars. The taillights appear a bit slimmer, and there are other small design updates. What I'm more excited about is a potential new battery. Battery tech is improving year over year as the industry moves to electric, and the new battery may allow e-trons to have a 370 plus mile range. I normally try to cover EV news that relates to the US, but this was too exciting not to share. Over 90% of new car sales in Norway now have a plug socket. Norway is on a mission to phase out cars that rely on fossil fuels. More than 9 in 10 new cars sold that were either electric or plug-in hybrid, according to Norway's Road Traffic Ministry or OFB. Nearly 8 in 10 were full EVs, and less than 5% of all passenger purchases so far this year have been gas-powered vehicles. This is really exciting news if you've ever been stuck at a broken charger. Ford deploys a fleet of angels to fix broken EV chargers. Ford knows that anyone who spent time living with a battery electric vehicle has the pain of finding a plug-in station broken and not being able to charge. Things have gotten better over the years, but it is still one of the biggest concerns new EV owners have when buying electric for the first time. Ford wants this problem solved once and for all by sending out charge angels. What are charge angels, you ask? Charge angels are on the lookout for broken chargers, wherever they may be. These superhero Ford employees will find and fix individual charging stations that customers or social media have reported as being problematic. They drive a fleet of specially equipped white Mustang mach -E's. The plan is they can service any plug on their Ford Pass network, which is a network of partner stations owned by Electrify America, ChargePoint, and others. It's really interesting to see car manufacturers explore this new side of their business the infrastructure. Before, car companies didn't have a hand in how you fuel your car. But with an electric framework, it's exciting to see others following Tesla's lead and putting resources behind making sure their customers have a great experience in their day-to-day -day use of their cars. Real quick, I just wanted to ask you a quick favor. If you are at all interested in an affordable, eye-catching, three-wheeled, revolutionary EV, check out the Aptera. If you pre-order through my referral link, I'd be forever grateful. You'll get $30 off the $100 reservation fee. And I'll be completely honest, they have a program where if you refer 26 people, you get a free after it, which is one of my goals for this podcast. You can check it out at thebeardedevguy.com slash after it. That is spelled a P T E R A. Okay, back to the news. If you are a Chevy fan, the electric Silverado may debut in January 2022. It's exciting to see progress in the electric truck industry. Chevy just released a teaser overhead shot of the upcoming electric Silverado. They already have an electric truck in the form of the GMC Hummer EV. It'll be interesting to see what from that platform will come to the more widely accepted Silverado. Features like four-wheel steering and crab walk would be awesome. We won't know the full details until January but they need to make some things happen to remain competitive. The Cybertruck and Ford F-150 Lightning are both coming, starting under $40,000. The newcomer Rivian became the first company to deliver its electric truck last month. Plus, you know other legacy automakers are itching to get in this space in the next couple years, like the electric Ram due for 2024. We buy a lot of trucks in America, so there should be plenty of room for all the companies to play. It's super exciting to see the competition and innovation happening in this space right now. Teslas can soon charge on third-party CCS plugs with this adapter. An email to Korean Tesla customers revealed a CCS charging adapter for Teslas. While the Tesla network is arguably the most used EV charging network in the US, they've had their issues with congestion. There are lots of CCS chargers across America, 
and opening those up to Tesla owners would be huge for ease of mind when traveling. The price will likely be around $250 when this is released in the United States. So, I have thoughts on this. Rivian looks to make $15,500 per vehicle off of subscriptions. In their IPO offering, Rivian listed details on how they expect to make more than 15 grand over 10 years with subscriptions from each of their vehicles. The vast majority of that would be for their planned level 3 self-driving software, and the rest would be from a monthly subscription for infotainment and other services. I get that online services need to be paid for, but I'm a bit worried about automakers diving into the software as a service mentality. A reasonable monthly fee I think is fine, as there are ongoing costs they need to recoup for managing these things. Also, I'm totally fine with self-driving features being extra. There's a lot of research and development cost that goes into those. I think 10 grand is a bit much, though. That puts it well past what an average person would be willing to pay which creates a bit of a class divide. That, in of itself, isn't a huge deal. There has always been a class divide in cars ranging from cheap beaters to over-the-top luxury. This is a bit different in my book because safety is involved. Self-driving cars are already safer than human-driven cars, and by putting that behind a huge paywall, it just feels a bit off. Going back to the news, this excites me as a BMW i3 owner. BMW says its EV sales have more than doubled since the start of the year. They sold nearly 60,000 EVs last quarter, which is an increase of 121% compared to the beginning of the year. The sales have been driven by the new models such as the iX3 and the Mini SE. This number will likely continue to grow by leaps and bounds as they release even more electric models, such as the i4, the electric Mini Countryman, the iX, and others. That's it for today. Thank you so much for listening. Again, if you want to support the channel and are interested in the Aftera, Get $30 off your registration fee by going to thebeardedevguide.com slash after. Thanks again.